Welcome back to another episode of Local Break, where we break away from the usual breaking news to bring you all things trendy and happening in Mzansi's entertainment and lifestyle news. First up, in celebration of Pride Month and shining a light on issues concerning the queer community, Local Break had the privilege of catching up with South African blogger, writer, publicist and transgender activist Yaya Mavundla. Check it out! For me, it's a solidarity uh, for what we are actually fighting for or the cause that we are fighting for as the LGBTI community. We are constantly actually saying to the government and the public that, hey, we deserve equal rights, we deserve uh, equal opportunities, we deserve respect. Let us also tell our own stories. But then also to celebrate, you know, um, the freedom that was actually uh, fought for by a uh, the um, activists that were there in the past before we actually even like um, existed. Also, you know, adding to what I've just said, especially about a Pride Month and the existence of us as, you know, transgender people or the LGBTI people, you know, I just wish um, we could be considered every day, be remembered every day, to exist every day, um, to be given support, to be given opportunities um, every day. It shouldn't only happen uh, during Pride Month. I mean, in the industry, of course, I mean, it uh, will be in the workplace. In the workplace, you're constantly being told this is who you're supposed to be. This is how you're supposed to behave. Um, you're supposed to uh, show up at work um, as what a you were signed at bed or, or your ID says more than what you are or who you are you know me as a transgender person then uh, if, if my ID says says a uh, male then which means I need to show up as work as male oh, which is the reason why then I then taken the initiative to actually you know what, let me just then create my opportunities but then for other transgender people that have not those that does not have those opportunities. General, unfortunately, uh, you would walk up into a clinic or a police station, of course, you would not uh, get the service that you deserve because already you have been um, diagnosed by those that are in power to say, you know, this is who you are and therefore you do not deserve to get the service that you are seeking. For example, with um, the case that I had with the apartment that I used to um, um, rent in Park Town, and I was harassed and beaten up by security guards that were actually supposed to be in that space and protected me, but they did not. But I said I was actually not going to let this go. I fought it through until actually there was justice. I think the first person would be Ure Kikosidao. Um, I mean, Reiki, as we all know, I mean, she challenged the Botswana government um, and she won the case in terms of gender marker or in, um, on her ID, you know, which was a big case, you know, for, for, for Botswana and I mean, even for Africa. And also I look up, you know, to myself, you know, for the things that I've went through and been able to to challenge uh, those norms and, you know, and rise above them, you know, I look up to myself for that and I'm like, you know what, I need them to do more, you know, then I constantly reminded that, that, you know, if I was if I was able to do one, two, three, and four, then which means tomorrow I can still do even more. And I look up to um, Professor Cesar Nelem Holy. I mean, the kind of work that uh, they do, it's really, really amazing. People choose to say, this is what I'm going to understand. This is what I'm going to uh, say. You know, people have the, have the knowledge, I believe. You know, I'm, of course, I'm not talking about people in the rural areas where the knowledge is little. I'm talking about people in the city, people that, you know, read every day that, you know, people uh, that uh, are participating on these matters, regardless of what um, they read or regardless of what they know, they choose this is what I will take and this is what I will go with. So this is why then I say, you know, I don't think it's, it's um, there is a lack of understanding. People do understand. 
uh, but uh, then those that um, understand and maybe even that those don't that, that don't understand then they will come forward and say a transgender person is then male or a transgender uh, person is a gay person which is totally not the case actually then start talking about um careers within the LGBTI communities within the trans community we need to start talking about um sex we need to start talking about relationships we need to start talking about families we need to start talking about a uh, health we need to start talking about uh, what transgender people actually go through when when they go to police stations because you know uh, transgender people constantly get harassed and um so much happens within the LGBTI community that you know they don't get justice simply or merely because they are actually transgender people and one has already di diagnosed you and said this is who you are and you are not deserving of that service we need to challenge the government it needs we need to challenge corporate spaces we need to challenge the media to do right by us it needs we need to uh, educate our families um it need to, you know, we need to focus on black lives. We need to focus on black lives uh, of uh, transgender people, you know, transgender people that are, that, that are black. Because for me, um, me being a, a black transgender person, I'm first a black person, you know, before I'm even a transgender person. So this is why then I would actually sum it up as black uh, life matter instead of even black trans lives matter um but if we're going to then put black trans lives matter it means that you know it, it goes to show that uh, we are aware that uh, there is a need um for us to focus on black uh, trans lives um constantly of sorry um because of constantly what has been happening uh, throughout the world uh, but also in south africa you know you find that um black trans gender people you know are, are disadvantaged like i said at disadvantage at work uh, at disadvantage at police station um, at home affairs etc etc and congratulations are in order for musician i feel like i've been congratulating her all year but yep Shoma Josie has been nominated for a 2020 BET award. BET announced the nominees for this year's awards earlier this week and South African singer Shoma Josie bagged a nod for Best International Act. Last year she bagged the Best New International Act and Shaw is nominated alongside the likes of Nigerian rapper Burna Boy and Congolese singer-songwriter Inos B. A shout out also goes to Zimbabwean born and South African based singer Shasha, who also scored her first BET nomination for this year's Viewer's Choice Best New International Act. And of course, we are rooting for all African artists. A win on this continent is a win for us all. According to BET, this year's nominees reflect an abundance of creative expression and black excellence across music, television, film, sports and philanthropy. The awards are set to simulcast live on Monday 29 June 2 a.m. Central Africa time on BET Africa DSTV channel 129 and the award pre-show will repeat later that day at 7 p.m. CAT with the award show following an hour later. Now, if don't come for me unless I fit you, was a person or people, it would be South Africans. This was evident this week after US musician and actor Tyrese Gibson received much deserved backlash from South Africans on social media. Now, Mans took to his Instagram to post about the reverse racism and white slavery in South Africa. The post captioned the flip. Get to YouTube, this is what's going on in South Africa, has since been deleted. But of course, we all know the power of this creature. To be honest, we don't even know where he found the pictures. Hashtag Tyrese and hashtag Tyrese must fall began trending all over the socials. And South Africans were not having it, with many accusing Tyrese for spreading fake news, which he was. Here's what we said to say. A 
Amongst those who were angered by the post was none other than Queen B. Bonang Mateba who tweeted, open quote, please don't come talk here about South Africa, you swine, close quote. Tyrese was even called out by fellow American celeb Jamie Foxx who had a lot to say. Here's the comments. In a now deleted response video, this is what Tyrese had to say. Mara, if you deleted it with an apology, is it really a, it's not an apology? Tyrese, that's not an apology. Start this video. I don't even know <laughs> how to go into what I'm about to go into. Um, I feel like my words and my intentions were being twisted up and Listen, if anybody follows me on Instagram, y'all know, uh, controversy doesn't scare me. People in my comments talking shit, going at me. Look, I've been doing this for a very long time, so none of that messes with me. But what do mess, what does bother me is when I either say something or do something and I am misunderstood. So, I will apologize um, for those people who feel the way. I will apologize. All we have to say is, the next time you try to be relevant, get your facts straight. And please don't include us in your fake news. Especially when it comes to the topic of slavery and racism. Now, on to more heartwarming content. Our ovaries could not deal with the oven, the bun posts which were all over the timeline this week. You guys have made such beautiful bundles of joy. Now, another bundle of joy that we always, you know, like, she's the girl. And a massive shout out goes to Zbatle. Not only is Nintendo Duma's bun smart, but she's also well-mannered and an absolute cutie. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, take a look. Let me see your shoe. Oh, they're so nice. Thank you, mommy. Oh my god. Oh, King Tokfagasis, yes? Yeah, man. I've got that for you. Wow! <laughs> my gosh! Thank you, mommy! Oh, Tabla Sam, you're welcome. adorable and this is the type of content that we are here for now some of you guys are chance takers because it's clear that you're not even scared of general baby kele coming for you so when the influencer you all love to hate michael in was the talk of the town again it was because she posted her getting a new tattoo during the lockdown and began to trend <clears throat> the reveal of the tattoo was done by the tattoo artist and Michali herself. Now there were mixed reactions to this, including many criticizing her for breaking lockdown regulations, which currently state that personal care services, this includes piercing and getting tattoos. Okay, wait, that's personal care service. Okay, I'm not questioning the government. Thanks guys. Are prohibited under lockdown level three. In addition, she was dragged for how the tiger tattoo on her calf looked. Guys, why are you like this? This is what you have to say with your spice. According to online sources, Michali is yet to comment about the saga. Anati. Lastly, if you haven't heard, popular series Muvango and Skim Sam re this, this is not funny. Recently shut down production due to COVID-19. Muvango stopped production this week after an employee was exposed to someone who tested positive 
and Skeep Some shut down production last week Friday after someone on set came into contact with a relative who had tested positive as well. Recently, Mnet's The River had also halted production due to COVID-19 but has since resumed this past weekend. Now, according to media reports, you don't have to be worried because Mubanga will continue uninterrupted pre-recorded episodes for the time being and so will skin some. But if he doesn't, listen, like, if you need, like, a show to stand in for, like, preferably skin some on SABC1, I'll be glad to take over. That's what we have for this week. We really, 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 really hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, like, subscribe, come back next week. Bye!